Francesca Rossi, and today I'm going to be reading Over and Under the Snow by Kate Mesner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over and Under the Snow. Over the snow, I glide into the woods, frosted fresh and white. Over the snow, a flash of fur, a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Under the snow is a whole secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them right now. Over the snow I glide, past beech trees rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss, out of sight. Look, Dad says, tracks. Tracks always tell a story. Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust. Up the hill, under a tree, an oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Under the snow, deer mice doze. They huddle up, cuddle up, against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. Over the snow I climb, digging in my edges so I don't slide back down. Under the snow, Voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. Over the snow, I swish. Down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, whoops. Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from a shelter of spruce. Almost invisible, she smooths her fur, a coat of white. Over the snow, I glide, past reeds where tadpoles play tag in springtime. Under the snow, Fat bullfrogs snooze. They dream of sun-warm days back when they had tails. Over the snow I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. Under the snow, beavers gnaw on aspen bark, settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? Over the snow, stop, a sound. We stand like statues carved in ice till a bushy-tailed fox steps from a thicket tips his ear to the ground, listens, listens, listens still, and leaps out onto the snow after an invisible dinner. His paws scratch away to find the mouse he heard scritch, scritch, scratching along underneath, under the snow. Over the snow I glide, a full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk wakes for a meal, bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. Over the snow, I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises, warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dogs sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick sticky marshmallows from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in the flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drowses away December, all alone. She'll rule a new colony in the spring. Over the snow I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery soft flakes. Under the covers, I snuggle deep and drift into dreams. Of cuddling deer, mice, and slumbering frogs. Hungry beavers and tunneling voles. Drowsy bears and busy squirrels. And the secret kingdom under the snow. Author's note. There really is a secret kingdom under the snow. Scientists call it the Subnivian Zone. It's a network of small open spaces and tunnels between the snowpack and the ground. It's created when heat from the ground melts some of the snow next to it and leaves a layer of air just above the dirt and fallen leaves. Many animals depend on this Subnivian zo Zone to survive the winter. For one thing, the snow acts like the insulation in our houses and keeps the Subnivian Zone close to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, even when the air outside is much colder. Small rodents like mice, moles, and voles travel under the snow because it helps keep them safe from predators, animals like hawks that would like to eat them. Some predators get tricky though. Weasels have skinny bodies and can squeeze into the tunnels in search of prey. Red foxes, like the one in this story, have fantastic hearing. They listen carefully for noises under the snow and can figure out just when and where to pounce to collapse the tunnel and trap a mouse for a meal. If you go cross-country skiing or snowshoeing in the woods, you might see tracks in the snow that lead to tree trunks or crevices 
and then disappear. Look carefully. Those tracks probably tell the story of an animal from the Stubnivian zone, that secret kingdom under the snow. The animals you met in this book really do eat, sleep, hide, and play over and under the winter snow. Red squirrels not only travel and hide under the snow, but also store food underground. They hide seeds and nuts in holes or under rocks and use their fantastic sense of smell to find them later when they're hungry. Shrews are little animals like mice that sometimes become meals for great horned owls and other predators, so subnivian tunnels provide important shelter. White-tailed deer like to sleep under coniferous trees, evergreens with cones. They provide shelter on winter nights. When they curl up to sleep, some of the snow underneath them melts, making deer beds easy to spot in the woods. Deer mice make nests out of grasses, leaves, and other bits of plants and line them with soft moss, fur, and feathers. Mice often sleep huddled together in the winter to conserve heat. Voles look a lot like fat mice, but with shorter tails and smaller ears and eyes. Like mice and shrews, Voles forage for food under the snow, searching for seeds, bark, roots, and insects. Snowshoe hares are famous for their seasonal color change. In the summer, these hares have a coat that's reddish brown or gray, but as winter approaches, they shed that hair and replace it with white hair to blend in with the snow. That makes it much easier for the snowshoe hare to hide from predators. Bullfrogs hibernate, buried in the mud at the bottom of ponds and marshes in the wintertime. Did you know that you can tell the difference between a male bullfrog and a female bullfrog by the side of their tympanum? That's a fancy word for ear. On a male bullfrog, the ear is about twice the size of the eye, while a female bullfrog's ear is about the same size as her eye. Beavers don't hibernate in winter, but they're less active, so they don't need as much food. Whole families spend the coldest months huddled together inside their frozen lodges, before winter sets in, beavers pile branches and twigs at the bottom of the pond, not far from the entrance to the lodge. That serves as their winter food supply, and they'll dive down under the ice when it's time to eat. Red foxes often eat small mammals like mice, voles, and shrews, but finding those animals can be challenging in winter. The red fox has an excellent sense of hearing, though, and will actually listen for the sounds of animals like mice under the snow. When a fox hears a mouse, it will pounce, often with all four feet on one spot to collapse the snow and trap the mouse underneath. Then it will dig until it finds its dinner. Chipmunks dig burrows in the earth and live there under the snow in the wintertime. A chipmunk's home often has different chambers, one for sleeping, one for storing food, and several tunnels for exiting and entering the burrow. Black bears sleep most of the winter. Before they go to sleep, they gorge themselves on food like fish and berries so they'll have enough energy to last until spring. Their dens might be in hollowed out trees, under logs or rocks, or in caves. Bumblebees don't all survive winter in cold climates. In fact, males and worker bees die in the fall, leaving only fertilized queen bees alive. The queen bumblebees hibernate in the soil or under a layer of leaves. They can even produce their own antifreeze to keep from freezing if temperatures drop too low. When the queen emerges in spring, she'll find a cool dark place to nest, often an abandoned mouse den, and lay her eggs to start a new colony. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed.